Welcome back to another Fourier series presentation. In this particular segment, I would like to just go over some of the algebraic steps that are involved to help demonstrate where these coefficients are coming from in the Fourier series expansion of a half wave rectified sine wave. The sine wave waveform that we're dealing with is illustrated here. It is the half wave rectified sine wave. The Fourier series expansion is given by a DC term, and I hope that's clear that you do have a DC offset if you averaged that over one period, and that is the maximum amplitude divided by pi. We then have a fundamental component that's relative to the sine wave form or the first harmonic in the sine and that has a magnitude of v sub m over 2. The remaining terms in this harmonic concept, this half wave rectified sine wave are the cosine terms and their coefficients are scaled by 2v sub m over pi and in the denominator we have an n squared minus 1 meaning those coefficients are falling off as n squared in the frequency and these harmonics are only the even harmonics in the cosine piece. Again, anywhere you see this omega naught, that is equal to 2 pi over the fundamental period, capital T. Let's now go through and see if we can explain or get a little bit better feel for where those coefficients are coming from. And this is really all coming to us with some trigonometry relationships. We want to compute the average value, a sub v, and where do these a sub n's and b sub n's come from. The functional form that we're using and then repeating every fundamental time period, capital T, is this v sub m sine of omega naught t, but that's only turned on for half of the fundamental period, so we're on from zero to capital T over two. The average value, hopefully we realize that that should be non-zero, is we're now integrating that waveform v of t over one period and we're dividing that time interval out, that's the 1 over t in our expression for a sub v. It's only non-zero though, only over half of the period, that means we only need to integrate from 0 to capital T over 2, and doing that we now see that the integral, or use the fact that the integral of the sine is minus cosine, we need to divide out that omega naught in the argument of the sine wave form, and if we now evaluate that cosine at the upper, upper limit, which is capital T over 2, and replace omega naught with 2 pi over t out front, we can see that the capital T's, or the periods, cancel. We're left with a 2 pi. Inside the square brackets, the t's cancel, and we're left with cosine of pi. The 2's also cancel. Cosine of pi is minus 1, and we are also subtracting the value of cosine of 0. In the square brackets, then, we're left with minus 2. That minus 2 cancels the negative sign that came from integrating the sine. We now have a positive value. We have a 2 upstairs, a 2 downstairs. Those cancel, and we're left with our average value of the Fourier series expansion, the maximum value of our half-wave rectified sine divided by pi. That's where that comes from. We can look to see where the first harmonic coefficient comes from in the sine piece, meaning we're taking our waveform, x of t or v of t, whatever we're calling it, that's this piece inside the integrand, v sub m sine of omega naught t. We want to find the first d coefficient, or the first harmonic in the sine expression, b sub 1, that's 2 over cap t. We integrate over the non-zero interval, and that's simply just half of the period, 0 to t over 2, and we scale it by 
the function that we are trying to find its coefficient for, which is this sine omega naught t. And hopefully then you can see that we really have a sine squared inside the integral. The sine squared, if we factor out the constant coefficients, gives us underneath the integral sign 1 half minus 1 half sine of 2 omega naught t. We can integrate that and obtain 1 half t for the first piece and a negative cosine for the second piece. But the second piece now, well, let's go back to the first piece. The first piece now is just 1 half of capital T over 2 since evaluating t at the lower limit gives us 0, that gives us t over 4. The second term, we now have 1 over 4 omega naught, but we have the cosine evaluated at capital T over 2 and at 0. Evaluating at 0 gives us 1. If we plug in capital T over 2 and realize that omega naught is 2 pi over cap t, the periods cancel, 2 of the 2's cancel, and we're left with cosine of 2 pi, which is also 1. We have 1 minus 1, or 0, and we now just need to come back to the left-hand side and see that the 2 and the 4 reduce by a factor of 2. The t's cancel, and we're left then with our first harmonic coefficient on the sine as v sub m over 2. We can look at the first coefficient for the cosine piece in the first harmonic. That's the waveform v sub m sine of omega naught t times cosine omega naught t. If we apply the product of sine and cosine trigonometrically, we get sine of the sum of the two arguments, which gives a sine of 2 omega naught t plus the sine of the difference between the sine argument and the cosine argument, and that just gives a sine of zero, which is zero. If we look at what's happening with the first term, sine of two omega naught t, that now gives us twice the frequency of the fundamental, and we're integrating over just half of the fundamental period, which means that we still have one cycle of a sine wave in this integration integral interval, and that's going to, as we know, integrate to zero. That means that the a sub ones and all the other odd indexed a's will be similar, and will simply be integrating over an even number of sine waveforms in a cycle, and that will integrate to zero. If we look at what happens when we look at the a sub n's when n is even, we now have the expression 2 over t. We have our waveform v sub n sine of omega naught t. And we have these different harmonic cosine pieces, cosine of n omega naught t. Using the trigonometric formula sine alpha cosine beta, we can then rewrite that product of sine and cosine as a sum of two sines where we now have 2 pi over t plus 2 pi n over cap t and then that same expression with a negative sign factoring out the 2 pi and the cap t we end up with n plus 1 and then 1 minus n in the arguments of those two sine terms Looking at the first one and integrating that, we divide out the 2 pi n plus 1 over cap t, and integrating sine, we get a minus cosine. Remember, this is for little n, or these even harmonics, and so if we have an even plus 1, we're going to end up with an odd. And now we have also in the second integral expression. We have 1 minus an even number, which is also going to give us an odd. It's going to be a negative odd, but since cosine is an even function, function, it doesn't really matter. And we now can evaluate those two pieces at the upper and lower limit. And doing so, if we look at the first piece, we have 2 pi, or an odd number of pi's, and capital T over 2, that's going to give us now minus 1. 
for a value, and then we're evaluating at the lower limit, which is zero, and cosine of zero is one, and we're subtracting that. We have a minus, a minus two, or a two. Likewise, for the second piece, we end up with a two inside the curly brackets. Those twos cancel with the two in the denominators out front, and we end up with capital V sub M over pi N plus one and capital V sub M over pi one minus N. If we get a common denominator, clean up the numerator, resulting numerator, we end up with the coefficient that we were looking for for the A sub N's when the N's are even and that's then this coefficient minus 2 v sub m over pi n squared minus 1. If we combine those coefficients with the trigonometric terms, the cosine of n omega naught t, our fundamental piece was had an amplitude of v sub m over 2, and our dc piece was v sub m over pi, we end up with our Fourier series representation of this half-wave rectified sine wave. And you can see that the higher harmonics are falling off in amplitude as the harmonic index squared, meaning that n squared is in the denominator and we're simply subtracting one from that. But we now have something over n squared minus one scaling those higher harmonics. That's then the derivation of those coefficients in the Fourier series expansion of the half-wave rectified sine wave. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better feel for that expression.